The New Orleans Saints have won three straight games and find themselves in a Thursday night primetime matchup against the Arizona Cardinals, but we may have lucked out. Kyler Murray is hurt and won't be playing in this football game, so it'll be up to backup Colt McCoy to try to lead the Cardinals to a victory. But can our defense pressure him into making some costly mistakes and forcing turnovers? We'll find out. Welcome back, everyone, to the New Orleans Saints franchise. Saints will start off the game with possession here, and Kamara is going to get the call with a stretch play. Take a look at the safety just coming down, trying to take the left side of the left tackle, thinking that stretch play was going to go really to the outside, but we'd end up cutting it up into the line and getting a big gain because of it. Mark Ingram is going to take this all the way from the 25 to the 15. That's a 10-yard gain. Let's check it here at first down and goal. And Jameis going to pass complete into the end zone. That's Michael Thomas. And the Saints are up 7-0 here very, very quickly against these Arizona Cardinals. Now, as we saw, Colt McCoy is the starting quarterback here for Thursday night primetime. Three touchdowns, no picks for him on the season. 503 yards, fairly efficient quarterback here taking the place of Kyler Murray due to an injury that he's out for multiple weeks on. So we kind of... Maybe did we get a little bit lucky? Uh-oh, maybe not. Maybe Colt McCoy is not so much a check down Charlie anymore. He's gonna fire this deep to Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, touchdown Cardinals. So they find themselves tied with us here. 7-7, seven, seven, Jameis Winston gonna take a sack on third down at six, and we're gonna have to put the football away here. Now, I do like this set in coverage here. We're gonna bring Williams on the outside, and Marshawn Lattimore, not Marcus Lattimore. I said it right like multiple times in that video, but the one time that I didn't was a key play in the game in the last video. Just unreal, guys. Chris Olave going to turn this turnover into a touchdown. James Winston, great pass, good read. I love that play. Chris Olave seems to be open constantly on that route, so... We'll see it a little bit more here in the next episode against the Raiders. We got a little spoiler alert for you. But Colt McCoy, a little play action. Second down and 10. Going to turn to third and 18 as Cam Jordan. Going to get the sack. We're protecting that 14-7 lead. So we got to watch out for the deep bomb here. McCoy, nothing doing. He's going to have to check it down here to the left. Saints football here again at the 33. Nice pass completed here to Michael Thomas. They love giving us that look. The CPU does. And we're going to call screen here on second and five, and J.J. Watts makes a play. You're only, only going to hold him down for so long. Pass completed here to Dwayne Washington on third and 15. We're going with the wheel route. And, yeah, Dwayne Washington, former Detroit Lion. Take a look. Getting his receiving chops on. And, yeah, take everybody take some snapshots. Take a good look of Washington in the end zone because he's a third stringer. Unfortunately, we're bringing that blitz again on the dime package there, bringing the blitz from the outside. And we just didn't get home. It truly is a do-or-die type of play. But here's Williams putting a big hit on McCoy. But he is able to check it down to the running back. Going to get to a third and one situation at the seven. But take a look here. We got Gardner Johnson coming in. And nobody picked him up. We, again, are loving that play. Bring the heavy pressure. Bring the blitz. Bring some fire to that offensive line. Go after him. Pin your ears back and go after him. Colt McCoy can't run. There's no Kyler Murray to worry about. There's no scrambling ability there, at least anymore. McCoy used to be able to run a little bit out in college. But two back-to-back -back passes to Michael Thomas in that four verts, that crossers route. I love it with Michael Thomas. He's such, such a good route runner. First down and 10, we do call a timeout here. We have no timeouts left here at the 11-yard line, and we're going to fire deep to Michael Thomas. It's a touchdown. Over top of Byron Murphy Jr., the Washington Husky product. And he was taken in the draft just a couple seasons ago, so... Yeah, the youngster, Michael Thomas, beats him. Third quarter, Marshawn Lattimore getting tested, and oh, what a play. Hollywood Brown had it in his possession. Looked like he caught it, but Lattimore's been having such an insane season. He's probably cornerback one out of the entire league at this point. He's just been ridiculous. So many interceptions, and of course that breakup. He's definitely got to be putting him into that consideration. But no, talking about DBs and how well they've been playing for us. Hollywood Brown going to get another touchdown here. That's number two for number two. Look at Garter Johnson here. 22. Twos are wild, I guess. Yeah, he must have gotten just beat off of the press coverage that he was given. So, you know, and Matthew was usered, and we just didn't get back there in time. You know, Marquise Brown's quick. He's speedy back there, so you really got to almost head back as soon as the snap is coming in. It's unreal. 
but a touchdown here for the Cardinals, but we are driving, and then a touchdown here again for the Saints. That is number three for Michael Thomas. He's going off here tonight. So in this universe, in this series' is universe, if you had him on your fantasy team on a Thursday night, he's setting you up for a win here this week. Almost a guaranteed win. Three touchdowns, are you kidding me? So pressure on Colt McCoy, and Gardner Johnson's going to pick this off, and we continue to bring the blitz. We continue to pressure Colt McCoy, and I think that caused the errant pass. Now here at the 16-yard line after the pick, Jameis Winston loves this single coverage here, but the blitz and the pressure is going to allow the pass to come off a little bit wide of Chris Olave, and it's another interception for Jameis Winston. We cannot seem to get an episode done without an interception on his ledger. It's insane. I just, I, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to make sure that we don't get picks on his ledger anymore. I'm tired of throwing picks just as much as you guys are watching it. Believe me. Believe me. But so far, you know, he was clean up until then, and I really wanted to make this thing 42. Wanted to get to 42 points for the first time in the series, but didn't happen. 35-24 is your final score. Winston McCoy giving handshakes, giving hugs all around. But, you know, Cole McCoy actually did pretty well. Two touchdowns, two picks. Completion percentage was fairly good. Just It was fine. 69%, I believe that is. But over 300 yards for him. So we've got this leaky type of defense that this bend-don't-break type of thing going on. But we do force a lot of turnovers. But we also give the football back a lot with Jameis Winston apparently here. So, yeah, Jameis was great. I mean, he had one interception, and he had five touchdown passes. We didn't run the ball in once. So 35, 35 points, that's... Uh, Five touchdowns. Do the math. Marshawn Lattimore. Another pick. So he's up to six interceptions now so far in the season. Again, he is, he, in my mind, he is cornerback one in the entire National Football League at this point. Pete Werner is going to be able to get an upgrade here. I'm looking at his numbers. 87 tackle, 85 speed. Pretty good pursuit as well. I don't think that he's necessarily needing anything to like stop the run or a speed rusher or anything power rusher I think he needs to start getting that pass coverage upgraded just a little bit because that's part of our scheme fit it'll work for him in simulation it'll work for him uh, as a CPU controlled player on the field if we're not usering him but I, I think we're going to continue to user him and bring him on the blitz when we do user him because I really like his speed and being able to pressure the quarterback do we do get a bunch of XP after getting a nice win, so we met our we met our goal by winning the football game. But now we get a situation where Chris Olave has an opportunity to get some much needed upgrades and some much needed XP, especially for his development as a rookie. So we've got to get 150 plus receiving yards against the Raiders here in this next game. Plus, if we get him a touchdown, it's going to even do him even more good with the XP and with rewards. So Alvin Kamara is going to get an upgrade here with receiving back. He's actually, it's funny, he's a 91 at receiving back. That's like kind of like what Alvin Kamara is, is a receiving back. So I don't know why he's rated so low in that. Michael Thomas is going to get a, a nice upgrade there. Jarvis Landry going from 84 to 85 as an overall player now. I think after looking at Jarvis Landry's numbers, it was almost in his attributes. It's like, you know, why not just continue to upgrade his slot ability that's kind of the, the receiver that he is let's not try to make him something that he's not i think it's fine now chris olave after catching a touchdown he's going to get an upgrade here in the last game so we're going to work on his slot just because i want him to be a better route runner his route running numbers can see some improvement now for elante taylor out of tennessee our rookie cornerback he's been not doing too bad on special teams and coming in at a, just a few times there when a guy needs some rest on the defense is like a dime guy but we're gonna upgrade him with the slot I want him to upgrade that man coverage a little bit I think that that's gonna do him some some good and last but not least Marquez Callaway out of Tennessee he's gonna get an upgrade as well I like Marquez Callaway he's got some speed he does really well with those play action crosser plays and I, I think he's gonna really be kind of a focal point for us uh, down the line once Jarvis Landry's gone maybe Michael Thomas has some contract situation going on We'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. But good young receiver. I'm excited about Olave and Callaway. 
So let's get this game started. We got Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to try really, really hard not to say Oakland Raiders. Very difficult for me. But we know the assignment here. We need a win in front of our hometown faithful, and we need to get Chris Olave 150 yards. Catch made by Chris Olave. A gain of 60. All the way down to the 14. Look at this. Throw by Jameis Winston. I need to do more of that. We've been doing more of this, like, this West Coasty thing where we're kind of just checking it down to everybody, running drags, running slants, running ins and outs and screens, running the ball. We need to fire this thing deep and try to try to stretch the field a little bit more. But back-to-back -back hits on Jameis Winston. It's going to lead to a fourth down and 23, and Will Lutz just being automatic. He's going to bang this thing in, and we're up 3 nothing. So Derek Carr... Let's take a look at what he's bringing to the table here. 15 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 1,800 yards passing. Not having a terrible season, but we are going to be implementing the same idea on defense. Try to bring the pressure, but some poor tackling by our Saints. And luckily, Tyron Matthew able to make the tackle to save the Josh Jacobs touchdown. That was definitely going to be a touchdown here. But Tyron Matthew, take a look. He was in coverage. He was supposed to be in zone coverage, but he said, you know what, screw it. Let's just make a play, baby. 17-yard line here, and we've got a one-on-one -on -one with Keelan Cole. He's going to win the battle against Marcus May. What a catch. We were trying to even tip that thing and deflect it, and, oh, man, it's just a great play. Great catch, great throw by Carr and Waller. Josh Jacobs, touchdown, Raiders. Second and 10, Winston scanning the field. Doesn't look like anybody's open, at least nobody comfortable enough to throw to. He's going to throw this thing out of bounds because we do have a penalty flag on the field anyway. And it's a holding call against our boy, our rookie, Trevor Penning. Second down and 20, Winston, play action. Oh, no. Oh, Chris Olave. I was sitting there thinking, is this going to get picked off again? And I bet you guys were too, huh? Yeah, but Chris Olave makes an insane catch there for 20. Winston, pump fake. He's going to fire this to Chris Olave, who comes back to the football. Great throw, great hookup to Olave. 12-yard line, Winston scanning the field. Pass completed on first and 10 to, yet again, Chris Olave. So it's one thing to force feed a player because you like him or you're trying to meet a goal, but it's an entirely different thing when the guy's open. So you got to go to him. We run the football here, not going to get the first down. Fourth down and four. We're going to toss this thing to Michael Thomas, and that will be completed, but we're only going to get a gain of one. So maybe hindsight being 2020, you got to kick the field goal there, make it a one-point game, and you can get seven to six. But good pressure. Dennis Allen, of course, loves that. And take a look at Alante Taylor putting pressure on the kicker, but unfortunately that's going to find a way through now. Take a look here as an update for Chris Olave's numbers. Five catches for 131. He only needs 19 more receiving yards. Pass completed here to Jarvis Landry. So we can kind of cool off on the Chris Olave project here. So we need to find some other receivers that are open here. Kind of work these guys into the football game now. Jameis Winston running to the right, trying to escape the pressure. We got hitches called, and there was nobody open. Winston trying to find somebody open here. Probably had the middle there with Landry or Thomas. Didn't go to him. Third down and 22, and Max Crosby going to get a sack. That is three sacks in a row. And that Saints offensive line wondering what hit him. What exactly hit him here? Fourth down and 33, and oh, no, no call. No call for running into the kicker or roughing the kicker, roughing the punter, whatever you guys want to call it. There was no call there. Unreal. But either way, it was a great job by the special teams unit to get it down to the three-yard line. We will get a tackle for a loss. Getting it back to the two-yard line. Pass completed here to the eight, and then third down and four. Bradley Roby should have picked that pass off. That would have maybe been a pick six for the Saints defense. So with two minutes left, Jameis Winston going to fire out here to the left side. That's Deontay Hardy with the catch, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. Pass completed here to Chris Olave for another big gain. It's going to get to second down and in inches. So in the second and inches play, but oh, what a throw by Jameis Winston, and what a concentration grab by Jarvis Landry. So about a minute and 24 at the two, and nobody's open. Maybe, maybe Prentice, the fullback, would have been open there if he got it to him, but unfortunately we're going to get sacked, and that's going to bring us to the nine-yard line. Pass completed here to Chris Olave, who's just going off today. 
Reception after reception after reception. We'll call a timeout here with 50 seconds. Third down and goal. Single back, Kamara. They're going to bring the blitz up the middle. And no, Jameis. More pressure allows the throw to go off wide. And Olave was wide open in the end zone. Would have been touchdown number one for him for the game. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So we get to kick the field goal here 10 to 6. We learn our lesson from earlier. We'll kick that field goal up. And now Derek Carr, pass completed here to Darren Waller, and he's gone. Nobody's catching the big-time athlete, Darren Waller. And unfortunately, we were just in that man coverage. It's kind of a stupid call. You guys can read me for it if you want. But the Blitz has been working on Derek Carr all day. And, you know, we just didn't have base aligned. We didn't get the guys back to man up. We didn't get the guys to man align is really what I'm saying here. So, unfortunately, no one lined up with Darren Waller, and the rest is history as a touchdown. Now, here's Darren Waller again, and unfortunately, are we going to catch him? Or are you please going to catch this man? Bradley Roby, big hit, going to knock him out at the six. Third down and goal here for the Raiders, and nobody's open, so Carr's going to throw this out of bounds, and he will kick the field goal. So we're still in this football game, guys. Down by 14, so two touchdowns can tie it up. And, oh, Chris Olave again. He was still in some pretty tight coverage there, but Jameis Winston dropped it in the bucket, and that is going to set Olave over the 150-yard mark. And we're not done. We're going to Olave again. We could have checked it down up the middle on the slant, but no, we're going deep to Olave. Now first and goal, touchdown Olave. That's what I'm talking about, man. Let's go. Not only does Olave have the yardage that he needs to get those XP boosts, but that gets us back in the football game, guys. And Jameis Winston, nice throw, nice low throw, possession catch, getting the touchdown. So Olave just absolutely going off. And again, it's not like we're trying to force the issue here. He's open. So you got to give him the football. But something you might have noticed, guys, is where is Michael Thomas? Michael Thomas is hurt. He had to exit the game, but he's not going to be in for the rest of it. So we have to throw to Landry and Olave. We've got to find a way here. So fourth down and three after we try to call a draw play. Passing, the passing game has worked perfectly all game long. And uh, thought the draw might have worked there on that third down. But oh no, what do we have here? Derek Carr escaping pressure and Hunter Renfro. Touchdown. What was that? Derek Carr runs away from the pressure. Look at this. He's, it wasn't even a designed bootleg. He wasn't trying to run that way by design. That was simply due to our pressure and our man blitz. Unbelievable. But here we're going to go to Olave again. And unfortunately, we get no call. Probably could have been defensive pass interference, but no call, guys. So about 7 minutes and 40 seconds, we're going to go to Jarvis Landry on fourth down and four. You got to go for it. You're down by 11, in my opinion. Pass going to be completed here to Olave. Man, we are seeing the field nicely here tonight. Third down and goal at the 10. So we'll push the football all the way up here. And a pass completed to Olave. Trying to stretch for the touchdown. But fourth down and goal. We elect to kick a field goal at the one-yard line to just keep ourselves in the football game. It's still an eight-point game. So a touchdown and two-point conversion could tie it. But... We had to give the ball back to our defense and have them try to make a play. And unfortunately, that 10th ranked defense is getting gashed here today. And Josh Jacobs picks up the first down and they were already in field goal range as it was. Would have been 30 to 19. And Josh Jacobs puts it in the end zone and that pretty much, pretty much ends our hope that we're going to win this football game, right? 34 to 19 and Jameis just going to fire this thing into the end zone looking for Chris Olave who's been just a monster all game long and unfortunately that's not going to get it done. So 34 19 about a minute 55 left to go and Marcus May over pursues the gap and there's no way that Bond is going to catch Josh Jacobs. He is gone. And he's running funky because he's trying to protect the football. <laughs> In a 34 19 game he wants that touchdown. Huge gain for the Raiders, and that's going to do it. 41-19, to unbelievable loss, man. It's unreal loss. It's the worst loss that we've had all, all season long. 41-19. to It's hard for me to explain it. I mean, just some explosive plays for the Raiders. Derek Carr was perfect. Two touchdowns, no picks. 
17 completions, 73% completion percentage. And I think the story here is Chris Olave. Despite what Josh Jacobs did and Taurus a new one, 186 rushing yards, three touchdowns on the ground. But Olave was the story. 13 grabs, 231, and a touchdown. The 231 receiving yards actually puts him just outside the top 50 in the single game receiving yards record book. So he's outside the top 50. Isaac Bruce had 233. And Drew Bennett for Tennessee, the Tennessee Titans, had 233 as well. So he came two yards short of getting inside the top 50. A pretty, pretty good list there. But, you know, take a look at this. So we praise Chris Olave for getting it done, but that's all we got. A plus three in catching traffic. <laughs> we lost in that fashion for that. We could probably could have run the football a little bit more, killed some clock, but... That kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie to you. But Chris Olave, he comes back to Dennis Allen and says, you know what, I feel like the offense, we well, scored 19 points, but I feel like we're on the verge of something big. It's like, yeah, of course you do, dude. You had 231 yards receiving. Of course you're happy. <laughs> but, of course, the media is coming back to Dennis Allen saying, hey, man, what's, what's going on here? Your quarterback got sacked a crap ton in the last game so what's the deal are you gonna blame Jameis Winston for it or are you gonna blame the O-line and I think that that's the correct response it's definitely the O-line's problem Jameis Winston had a I mean all things considered he had a pretty dang good game man he kept finding Chris Olave he found Jarvis Landry he was dealing with Michael Thomas being out so yeah I think that Jameis had a pretty decent game through the one interception that wasn't really I, I can't really count it honestly it's just kind of a Hail Mary at that point tipped in the end zone double coverage yeah but you got to take a shot so it is what it is all right so the next game we've got the ravens on monday night on of course monday night so i will see you guys tomorrow night for baltimore versus new orleans should be a good game guys five and three teams taking on each other good defenses all the way around plus we get to play against lamar jackson yeah that's gonna be fun right josh jacobs just tore us up 180 Rushing yards and three scores. What do you think Lamar Jackson's going to do? Oh, my God. I'm a little nervous about that. I am very nervous. But this is a big game for us. Two, five, and three football teams. If we can win this thing, we can stay afloat with the Panthers and the Buccaneers that are both six and two. So we'll see how that's all going to play out, guys. Leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you back here tomorrow night for Baltimore, New Orleans on Monday Night Football. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. And peace.